This weekend just gone was Warhammer Fest 2023 and they announced the brand new Leviathan box set for 10th edition. But they're also using some of those miniatures to run demo games of 10th edition for people who <laughs> wanted to queue for 5 hours. And some of the rules that haven't been shown off yet were being shown off in those demo games. So I'm going to go through them with you now. And uh, apologies, I'm very tired because of Fest, so uh, bear with me. <laughs> so this weekend you were able to play 10th edition and wargamer has put together a nice article to remind me of all the rules that i've told about over the weekend there was demo games so this is an example these are the demo games that are being played again pro images provided by the wargamer great website make sure you check it out tim and alex are legendary love those guys to bits they're awesome now they're doing demo games they had eight people around the table they had 20 of the new flamer boys i forgot that what they're called they had the new box knot with the las cannon and missile launcher versus two well they had two dreadnoughts 20 flamers they had 40 termagods and two screamer killers on the other side and they were playing uh 10th edition and they had some very interesting rules one of the first ones is 10th edition has blast still but how blast works is a little bit different currently in 9th edition blast you check the size of the unit and obviously blast you can't shoot it in combat but it has a random number of shots if you shoot at a large unit say more than six you always count as well in a three and if you shoot a unit more than 11 you count as the max shots but now you just get plus one shot for every five models in the unit now this is interesting because it means you can get more shots than your gun can actually fire normally which is amazing because if you got a d6 shot and you shoot against a unit of 10 you can actually get d6 plus two now you could roll a one that's still three but you get you could get eight shots which is also cool but it's also against you every five models in a unit so five man units actually proc an extra extra shot um for for blast which is really interesting rather than it being more than six it's now five so only five models actually gives you an additional shot so if you got d6 shots if you shoot a five space marines five incursors or anything like that d6 plus one very very interesting very very interesting so and there's and then as far as i'm aware i don't know yet there's no cap there's no cap so if you shoot a unit of 30 you're gonna get plus six shots i think blast a lot of the time had more negatives because people don't run many horde models but blast against big hordes is really really scary again you know it's gonna feel really 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 scary do you think bringing 19 man squads over 20 would be a good idea yeah i think so i think if you can keep one below every unit of five it's actually gonna be more beneficial than bringing like 15 of them if you're gonna run units of 20 necrons you're probably better off running units of 19 because you're not gonna get blast you're not gonna they're not gonna get that additional shot However, whilst they're not getting that additional shot, you've already lost one, technically. It's one of those. Especially if you've got resurrection orbs and stuff like that. For Necron specifically, it might be all right. But for orcs, maybe you run 29 orc boys, 19 beast snaggers. Do you think the... Well, it's, a, the, well, it's the same question, Seamus, right? Would you Are you going to see more people running smaller units? And I think probably... I'm going to sit down. I think probably. I think that would make a lot of sense. Just because... Just because, like, I think the thing is with, like, running, like, five-man squads, you usually can't do anything. But if you take three-man, are you going to bump it up to six? Maybe. Are you going to bump it up to five? Probably not, just because it's, like, <laughs> you're just giving them free shots, which you don't want to do. I still expect we go to Sigma system and unit sizes. That's also true. We don't actually know if that is going to change. Do they go to the Sigma system of you can take five and then you can only add five models? You can't add one model at a time. I agree that squad size will be set. That is a good point. That could be. I guess characters will add to the unit size too. I imagine so. I don't know. I imagine though. I think that'd be the case. That'd make a lot of sense if the character is added to it. You wouldn't say, oh, it's a unit of five with a character. It's just a unit of six. Because he's part of the unit, right? And then I think it says it's like only if they die, they become separate units or something. So that's interesting. Very interesting. I think Blast, that is like a humongous change. Like really crazy change. They say in the article the character is part of the unit. So that just makes sense. So you'd actually want to run like... 18 necron warriors attach a lord on them or something or a crypt tech or whatever they're gonna be able to do last is gonna be a little bit more scary that's for sure that's for sure the next one another great picture again great article thank you so much to wargamer for getting all this wrote down because it's just like it's nice to have some visual assets because i didn't manage to get onto these tables overwatch guys this is crazy 10th edition overwatch has had a major change all around it's still a stratagem it's still one cp and but you can do it in the movement phase or the charge phase so in the movement phase you can overwatch a unit <laughs> i don't know how this works uh it doesn't really say how it works it just says if an enemy ends its move in range of you it's fair game so in range if i've got a basilisk that's got 72 inch range can i overwatch every turn anywhere on the board 
No, I don't think so. But I imagine there is a range of Overwatch in probably 12. I don't know. Kind of similar to like Heresy and stuff like that. Think Borning Patrol Overwatch. Potentially. But yeah, it feels like a reaction. It feels like a reaction. So in your opponent's movement phase, they come too close to some flamers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't want to charge him? It's fine. I'm just shooting the movement phase instead, mate. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Basilisk is 240 inch range. Exactly. Can a Basilisk overwatch anything on the board and the table next to you every turn? Nah. <laughs> 24 inches is what you were told in the example when you was at when you asked. That's fair. So maybe maybe a unit within 24. That's quite a long range for an overwatch. It's still going to be hitting on sixes, but like being able to shoot 24 inch if you've got extra long flamers, for example, that's going to be a pain. Could ever watch the same unit twice in your post turn? No, you can't. It says you can only use it once. Once per turn. So, according to this article, it is limited to once per turn. So, yeah. So, like, I think about, like, Zinch Flamers, like, Demon Flamers. Flamers of Zinch. They're going to be scary. The new Incinerator guys, they're going to be scary. They're going to be really, really scary because you just can't go near them because they'll shoot you in the movement phase. Because they've got flamers that will auto hit. Even though Overwatch is only sixes, if you auto hit, it doesn't matter. But we'll see. It says it's once per turn. Does that mean it's actually once per phase? Do the pe Were the people running the demo really tight got it wrong, potentially? Are we just... Do we not have all the information it's actually right? Also, potentially. Also, potentially. So we will see. So that is Overwatch. That's obviously a huge one. So now you're going to have to play a little bit more cagey when you're running at stuff for charges because you've got to be careful what can Overwatch you. And if it's got a bunch of flamers, that's going to be really scary. But the other one that is interesting is objective markers. Now, I've got to grab one. Now, as far as I'm aware, they have remained the same size. But it says, in 10th, models can't stand on objective markers anymore. No model can end its move covering any part of an objective marker. This is this is aimed to make sure all players can clearly see all the objective markers on the table at any time. So, so if the objective marker is still 40 millimeters, this is objective markers that we sell, restock this week. Uh, these are objective markers we sell. So they've got, as you can see, these are the, uh, you'll see these a lot of tournaments because what this is, this is an objective marker and the capture zone all in one. So it says you can't walk on the objective. Now, if the objective marker remains the same on these, this isn't an objective. This is a marker mat. Okay. The actual objective is here. This dotted line, as you can see, this is a 40 millimeter dotted line. And this represents where the objective is in the game. Okay. So the normal objective marker in 40k right now is 40 millimeters, a terminator base essentially. And that's there. Okay. I don't have one, but a lens, let's say for a lens cap. The, the objective is here, but all of this is the capture zone. And this is why people play them. Because you don't have to measure, oh, I'm, am I within three inches? It's just like, am I on the mat? Am I not on the mat? I'm always within three. It doesn't matter. And what you find in the game right now is you put a character on the middle. Trajan, for example, you know. Abaddon, for example. You can put them on the middle of the objective. And due to heroic intervention, which is end of the, move, end of the charge phase, heroically intervene three inches you can't actually go onto that objective without dealing with that character but now now for example with these if you've got a marker there that you can't stand on abandon has to stand here trajan has to stand here and now you can touch the objective marker without going near the character so that kind of creates like because what you can create is an uh, an npe non-player non-playable experience where you've got a character on there and you just can't interact with that objective where now there is a way to interact. Your opponent can try and stop you by putting the character closer to you, for example. So the only place that you can't hurt Cleave is further away and you can't get to it. But also, at the same time, is if you aren't using these and you are using a real objective, not a lens cap. If you if you are using these, you can put a model on top and you can't see it and you can't see where the capture zone is. You put a piece of terrain over the top, you can't see where the capture zone is. You can't get your tape measure near it. So what it does is it allows you to see the objective marker all the time. So I think that's an interesting change. It stops like it stops like weird janky stuff to outplay your opponent, which is good and bad. It creates weird experiences where Imperial Knights can just sit on the objective normally, but now they can't, which is going to be weird. Whether they can move across it as normal, I imagine so. But they can't end their move on it, which is going to be really weird. You can create really weird like move blocking by the sounds of it according to this if the imperial knight can't like get his base over what happens so actually blocking the whole objective with the bane blade exactly exactly so if you don't use mats it allows you to see the objective all the time to measure from so you can actually get to it but if you do use those mats um which is because they know they're not with their markers they're not really on the board right now until they will be markers you can use physical things that look cool um because they are actually a thing you are going for which is nice 
but at the same time it creates stops weird jank for like heroic interventions which is cool i like it i think it's a good change who's taking bane blades anyway <laughs> which is one guy it makes jank for large vehicles it does but it also prevents jank for large vehicles they well, could take the objective without a big base model could not charge in some cases because they can't charge to touch the marker i think you'll still get that you'll still be able to move block but it's just like you won't be able to hide the objective under a base i think especially if they're planning on like making bigger units you know what i mean like bigger models especially like this screaming color that's huge so the next one is some interesting changes to fight phase so this article says seventh edition fight phase the rules for piling at the beginning of the fight phase remain the same as ninth edition but the rules governing who can fight afterwards have changed a bit melee engagement is pretty straightforward a model that is in base contact with an enemy figure can fight it as can any models that are in base contact with them but yeah so like engagement range they've got rid of the half inch engagement by the sounds of it because a minute is half an inch and then half an inch of that one no they don't make a half inch objective marker uh, they don't make a half inch measurement stick or anything like people have them but they don't make one so it's a bit weird but yeah so like base to base is interesting i'm assuming there's still a vertical distance for engagement range otherwise jacari tanks are going to become real sweaty well yeah that's true <laughs> that's true i'm sure they'll they'll have like stuff like hover vehicles like they'll have a rule for it maybe you measure straight down for example do you think they did this at the demo to make it easy to play what do you mean do it like change the rules for the demo i don't think so i think they probably tr took some interesting things and just made it made it so people could see what the new rules were because the whole point of the demos is to see what 10th is like and if you're gonna wait five hours and not get the real rules that'd be really annoying that reads as my stuff in base with yours and then my guys in second rank to me that's exactly what it says yeah as i said currently you can be in base you can be an in half an inch away and then the next guy can be also half an inch away and you can still fight and now it's kind of like shoved it a bit closer you know these could be the combat patrol rules rather than full rules so that's also true we are just going off what we do you know uh, but in terms of consolidate moves, units that aren't engaged with the enemy at the end of the fight phase can still make a 3-inch consolidate move, but only if it puts them in control of an objective or in engagement range. So no janky free movement. No janky free movement. So at the minute, this is an interesting change because at the minute, if I charge two units into one unit and I and I kill something, but the, the other unit that hasn't fought can pile in three and then consolidate three, so it gets like a free 6-inch move. And that's really janky and always really weird where you can like charge loads of stuff into one guy punch it with like shit stuff and all the big stuff can then free movement six if you need it i agree des i like the janky free movement because that's like where games are made and uh, you know you can like win games by doing that but but yeah the, it sounds like they got rid of it because you can only consolidate if you are consolidating into an enemy unit or onto an objective which i like if this is a new thing so you can might be able to consolidate onto an objective to take it instead of fighting which would be nice or after you fought uh have i spoken about fight first i don't know much about fight first without, except for what chappers has said um fight first is a thing but there's no fight last just fight first and then everything else which is really interesting so no fight last i presume because there's so much jank with fight last and then fight first and then not fight first but you have fight last and you always count as fighting last but then you've got fight first trying to work all that out so being able to just have fight first is cool. You've, you don't have like triple priority. You've just got one priority. Um, but yeah, that's neat, really interesting. Again, so it just feels like they get rid of some of the weird, back from the sound of it for combat, especially like getting rid of weird, some of the weird jank, like free free movement outside the movement phase for, for no reason. Um, being able to pile in and consolidate, etc. Like when you haven't even fought is really weird. But then being able to consolidate towards objectives or onto objective markers, onto old capture zones, I'm going to say on objective, just not on the marker. They can consolidate onto objectives or into engagement range. I like that because you can do some funky jank with that too. But it also allows your unit to move into a, like a, a better position every time rather than being like, I can either go into this big nasty thing or not move. <laughs> so either way, I'm going to die. Where it's like, oh, actually, I can consolidate onto the objective, which is really nice. That's a good positioning for, the, for me. Charging and not basing in order to consolidate away with the succubus is super annoying yeah and that's it's always weird it's always weird like charging but not basing and then flying around the side of the unit and then piling out the other way it's always a bit weird again it's just trying to get rid of jank which is a nice it's a nice thing to do it talks about de desperate breakouts or desperate escaper tests um how it will work for battleshot units that fall back from combat 
As we know, 10th edition Battleshot tests are made on 2d6. You need to equal or beat the unit's leadership at start or become Battleshot for the round. If your unit's Battleshot, it's OC or objective control drops to zero, meaning it can't hold any objectives. And if it falls back from combat, it must take a des desperate escape test. And what is that? You roll a die for each model falling back and for each one or two, a model will flee. So it's suspected that parts were similar to 9th edition combat attrition test. So desperate breakout, trying to fall back if you've broken, you sense to get chopped down on the way out. That's really good. <laughs> That's really, really good. And the and the screamer killer has death scream in your shooting phase after this model has shot, select one unit hit by one or more of those attacks. This unit must be a battle shot test. Uh, must take a battle shot test, subtracting one from that test. And then what does it do? Just have to hit. D6 plus three attacks, blast. <laughs> Hits on a four. So out of four shots minimum, you gotta hit once and you can make them take a battle shock test. If they get four back, they get cut down. It's good. Very good. So that's that's really strong. That is a really strong data, data sheet. Look, T9, move eight, top save, wounds 10. Nasty shooting, loads of shots, bioplasmic screen, blast, assault, so advance and shoot. Scream until it kill a talons. 10 attacks at strength, 10 minus two free damage. Oh my god! <laughs> Ten attacks! This is lion level of attacks. This is lion level of attacks. <laughs> Brutal. Hits on a three. Strength ten minus two. Three damage. That is awful. That is so bad. That is so bad. <laughs> a knight falls back while battle shot and gets cut down. Don't be shit. <laughs> Don't roll a one or a two. You're fine. So they're the new rules we know from 10th edition uh, according to the Wargamers. Thanks to Wargamer for making that article just so we can have a good look through and have it all written down. So thank you so much to those guys, the legends. Let's uh, make sure you do check it out. I'll leave a link in the description. Um, but otherwise, I'm excited to see what the rest of 10th um, shows off. I'm sure Games Workshop will be doing some confirmations on some of those rules we've seen. Are they from Combat Patrol? Are they from the main rule set? Were the people uh, doing demo games really tired and maybe got things wrong? Potentially, all of those could be true. But no one really knows until we've got the book in our hands. So I'm excited to see. I'm very excited to see.